Okay, so yeah, we are now live. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Uh, if either you join us here uh, in, in person on Zoom or you're watching us Facebook stream online, we're very happy that you're here. My name is Jai Chen Le Bing. Uh, everybody calls me Dr. J. I am the Dean of International Affairs and Global Engagement at College of the Canyons. We are really happy and privileged to be able to work with universities across the globe uh, who also, like us, welcome international students onto their campus. Today, we have universities from England, from, from France, that's in different areas, uh, one specifically about arts, one has focus on business, one is more uh, general in, with a lot of areas. So today I want to encourage you to go through the presentations and then we have three other universities tomorrow and mm -hmm. as well some university at this moment they could not join us because of global time difference. We do have uh, information that the information that Marita will be able to share with you at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Marita who will give you a little bit of the background. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. And so I'm very excited to be able to offer this, our very own um, study abroad virtual fair. Like in the past, we've been able to do things live and in person and we hope to get there soon. But for now, at least now, because we can have this online, we can bring you uh, representatives from their home country, from, them, from their home that can talk to you about their programs directly. You can ask questions. And if you can't join us live, if you're watching the recording of this, then please, please, please reach out to us. You can uh, email cocglobal at canyons.edu and you can talk to me directly, Maritza Monson, um, and I can kind of guide you through the options you have because study abroad will come back and it's already happening. We've already got some movement of students. So I want to make sure that you guys are able to study abroad if that's what you really want. We have multiple options for you. Okay. And then I think we'll start. Um, oh, we have more people joining. Great. Um, we we'll start with uh, Felicity. If you want to go ahead and share your screen and share your presentation, maybe uh, introduce yourself a little bit. And you're muted. Always, always. Hi, I'm Felicity. I'm from the University for the Creative Arts in the UK. Um, I'm just going to get my screen shared. Just bear with me one second. So I am the regional manager for um, UCA for students coming from the US. And we're really, really excited to be working with COC. We um, hope to welcome some of you guys on campus next year um come back to the motherland you know come and see what we're up to it'll be lovely to see you guys in the uk okay can i just double check have you got the full screen yes. available fabulous okay so a little bit about the university for the creative arts <clears throat> my contact details are going to be at the end of this as well so you're more than welcome to email me um if you're unsure of anything um obviously maritza and the team mm -hmm. there can help you guys but you're always welcome to come direct to me as well. And I can talk everything over with you. Okay, so UCA. So just a little bit about, about us as a blurb. Um, just to let you guys know, you probably are used to getting masses and masses of data when you looked at community colleges and when you looked at different places in the States. We don't really tend to do that in the UK. We tend to talk about our rankings and maybe student satisfaction and job employment and employability but we definitely you know we're, we're not presenting like a one page this is who we are with all our data um just a difference in the nature of how we sort of talk to students but yeah you might sometimes ask us questions and we're a bit flummoxed especially if it's about things like acceptance rates because we just don't usually work with them over here they're just not a thing because of the way that you apply to institutions in the UK. So if you ever do contact us and ask us about certain data that we can't answer, we promise we're not just being daft. It's just that we don't do that kind of data. We don't look at it like that. But just to tell you a little bit about UCA. So in the UK, there are three main ranking systems. Um, we're really pleased to be the top creative specialist in one of those rankings. So 
on the Guardian League tables with a top creative arts university. We are one of the top five modern universities in the UK, according to Complete University Guide. Um, obviously, we're very old in the UK. We, we um, Modern universities tend to be universities that have started, I believe it's post 2000 or sorry, or post 99. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but what we would consider modern, you know, it's not something that goes back to the 17th or 18th century. But yeah, we're very proud of being one of the top five modern unis. Our business school for the creative industries is ranked seventh in the whole of the UK. Um, and it's a very specialist art and design business school, which is really unique. And we're top in a few other things as well. So our teaching for communications and media, we're top in the Guardian for um, our business and management, we're top in the Guardian and the Times. And then we're third in the Good University Guide for um, our architecture teaching as well, which we're really proud of. Our academics and our teachers are absolutely the best thing about us. They're a really lovely bunch and we're really pleased to have them on board. Okay, where we are. So, oh, this is skewed a little bit. Sorry, it's cut some bits off, but that's okay. So we are based down in the southeast of England. You can see just there on the map. Um, Believe it or not, this is considered the warmest and sunniest part of England. Um, definitely, it's not as gross and grey and horrible as you think it is. I promise parts of it are lovely. Um, we have two campuses in Surrey, which one of them has been cut off, unfortunately, but it's a little bit further down to the left, Farnham. Then we have Epsom, um, which is in London. Then we have Rochester and Canterbury. So we used to be four art and design colleges that go back to, I think, 1852. And then we, over the years, have slowly merged to become different, you know, to become one university. And that's why we have the four campuses. Very close to London, very close to all the major airports. And it's really easy to pop over to the continent as well. So great access for travel. Now, what we do, so we are a specialist art and design university. We Everything about us is creative, even our business programmes. If there is an art and design course that you can think of, we do it. And we probably do 10 different versions of it. And then we probably even do a few different versions that you've never even heard of before. There is so much on our campus. I believe at the last count, we do about 150 different programmes. You'll have to excuse me, if I say courses, I mean programmes. It's, it's a little bit of the difference in English um, in the way we use it. So we do 140-ish different programmes, um, loads of different opportunities on all of them, and each one is very unique as well. So we can really find the right thing for you and the right thing to tailor to what you've done. Obviously, with you COC guys, you're coming in with an associate's degree from one of your art and design or more business programmes. We've been through your um, your uh, your course catalog, and it looks great. We we think that you're going to fit really well into our classes when you guys come and join us. Now, just some of the places that our students have gone to work as part of their degrees. This is always a big question. You know, can I do internships? Can I do placements? Can I do shadowing? All of these things are available on UCA courses. Depends on the course in the way that it works, but um, most of them have a work placement where you go and do two or three days in a company. Some of them have internships where you do a full week, full six weeks. Some of them you're shadowing someone in industry from the very start of your big program to the very end. So you really get to know them and get to know what they do. I'm sure you guys recognize some of these. Obviously, the Apple is pretty global. We all know what that is. Um, but then we also have some sort of uniquely British things on here, like Channel 4, which is the big four. Um, we are very lucky, we're well, not lucky, we, UTA has worked incredibly hard to build up these relationships and, you know, industry comes to us now, they want our students. So you're working with them from the very beginning and you're doing lots of live projects. So yeah, great opportunities, even the BBC is on there. All right, and what we ask of you, so as I said, we've been through your course catalogue. It's great. We want you guys and we're super excited to have you. So we're not asking for too high a GPA. We're asking for a 2.5 out of four. 
Um, even then, if there's mitigating circumstances, we can have a talk about it. We can talk to the academics. The most important thing for UCA is always going to be the portfolio. Now, I haven't put a portfolio guide in here, um, but we can do portfolio guides throughout the year. Contact me. I'll talk you through it. I can hold your hand through it. I know you guys are probably going to have a great portfolio anyway. Don't overthink it. Don't stress it. It will be fine. I promise we'll get you through that um, little bump. But in terms of our um, standard entry requirements, this is what we're looking for. Now, our fees, these are always important to talk about. Um, you will find when you're looking at UK universities, um, we talk about the fees a bit differently. In the UK, we very much, um, we talk about the fees and the accommodation and living costs very separately. So if you talk to a British university representative like myself, we're just going and you say, you know, how much does this university cost? We are going to separate out these costs. We're not going to put them all together in one package. You will find that the fees in the UK, obviously it varies between university and it might vary between course, but the fees are a set thing. It's not like when you apply for the US, you know, the fees are what they are, and then you might get a reduction here and a scholarship there and a merit-based bursary there. In the UK, the fees are what they are. And then you apply for a scholarship afterwards. Now, COC might have some partnerships where you guys have got guaranteed scholarships, which is awesome. Um, UCA is unfortunately a little bit mean with that. We, um, our senior management team isn't a fan of things like that. But I do have about 500 scholarships to give away coming into the September term. So our fees are £16,950 per year tuition. You can um, borrow up to £52,000, so $52,000 with FAFSA or Sally May if that's the route you want to go down. And we can work with you to try and bring your fees down a little bit as well. In terms of accommodation costs, now we are based in the southeast of England, which is probably the most expensive part of the UK, except for central London. We um, still manage to keep our costs fairly reasonable. Our student accommodation tends to go from about 6,000 up to 10,000 pounds for the full year of accommodation. And then you've got your living costs on top of that. Most accommodation in the UK you'll find as well is self-catered. Now, just to let you know about some of our scholarships. So um, most of our US students are probably gonna go for the International Future Leaders for the Creative Industry Scholarship, which is going to bring your fees down by about £3,000 a year. Um, we, I wouldn't say that I'm a decision maker in this, um, but I send these applications to our academics. So I, it's always, you know, putting a little extra word in for the partners that I really like, and they tend to be very generous with us. So definitely make sure if you're coming to UCA, you apply for one of our scholarships. Now, I've banged on about the boring um, procedural things for far too long. So let's talk about some of our alumni and our recent graduates, because this is where we really get to show off. And this is where you get a chance to see our kids shine. So um, we've had one of our uh, fashion graduates recently. She's been on the Netflix show Next in Fashion. She did really well. We also had one of our fashion management and marketing students. She fashion management and marketing, she's also a brilliant makeup artist. She was on a BBC throw, pro, BBC Three programme called Glow Up, where it was all about prosthetics and different kinds of makeup. So very, very cool. She came in fourth, we were really proud of her. Lewis Blythe, whose images are down at the bottom, he is one of our games art students. Where we are in the UK, we are what's known as the golden triangle for game design because we have all the big game studios around us. So we send students to work with EA Gaming, to work with Sony from the very beginning of their studies. So they just tell us all these things that they're working on. It's like, oh, I know that. I play that. Or my partner plays that. So, yeah, lots of real, real world experience. Then... Our animation school, we are, we are the second oldest animation school in the UK. Um, so Chris Butler up on the top right, he, um, with this show, with my show, sorry, with this movie, Missing Link, 
He was the writer and director. They it was it was Oscar nominated. They beat Frozen 2 and Toy Story to win a Golden Globe. He himself has had a couple of Oscar nominations already. Then just below that, you might recognize this image from Isle of Dogs. This was one of our animation students who um, was the animation director on this. He has six Oscar nominations in himself. And then just of our newer graduates, we've got Claire Keir, who recently won a big student film award as well. So very, very proud, of course, again. Then some of our games students, so you guys might recognize this game on the left. So this is Monument Valley. This came from one of our students. He worked with the team that created that. And then we have Cap Tap at the bottom. So again, coming from our game kids. Um, don't, don't, uh, it, it, even if I'm talking about courses that you might not necessarily have really specifically studied before, have no shame in applying for them. You know, we, there's a lot of flexibility in that year when I'm studying in the UK. And we can definitely look at accepting students onto different programmes if you haven't necessarily studied that straight before. It, there's a lot of mixing and matching of the courses that you guys do that we can match into that second year entry for us. Um, and then up at the top, I'm pretty sure everyone recognises this. This is Doctor Strange. We have sent a student to work on every single Marvel film in this since they've sort of been coming back up, um, whether it's been costumes or sets. They actually film an awful lot of Marvel just down the road from us, about a 15 minute drive from me. Um, they've been doing The Witcher there recently. So we've had kids go and work with the lovely Henry Cavill. Um, We've also had students recently working on the Game of Thrones prequel, which is being filmed like literally in my town, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, we're in this really perfect location in the UK. We're not central London, but nobody films in central London. So great place to be. Um, I'm aware I'm taking a lot of time, so I'm just gonna speed up a little bit. Some of our fashion students, you know, they're now working with big luxury designers in um, China. One of our students won the Pretty Little Things Designer of the, War Designer of the Year Award. Pretty Little Things is a huge, it's like ASOS, it's massive. Um, and then Ebony Barrett won, she was one of the winners for Graduate Fashion Week, which is just incredible, so proud of her. Then our most famous alumni, everybody knows her, everybody loves her, Peppa Pig. We bang on about Peppa Pig all the time, talk about Peppa Pig far too much. We send students to go and work with Mark at the studio. We send students to go and work at Peppa Pig World at the big theme park. So absolutely loads of involvement with it. Where's Wally or where's Waldo? I think you guys call him, um, created by one of our alumni a very long time ago now. One of our students directed Star Wars Rogue One. And we, again, we're very involved in Star Wars because it's all so local to us. It's all filmed so close to us. And Zandra Rhodes is one of our, was previously our chancellor. She's one of the most influential fashion designers in the world. She's incredible. She still takes students to work with her. Um, as I said, she, she was previously our chancellor, but she's getting a little bit old now. And when it reached the point where she was falling asleep on the stage at graduation, she decided just to step back a little bit. But yeah, she's great. Super supportive of the university. And then me. Definitely not looking like this today. <laughs> um, <laughs> we all know our um, staff pictures are a little bit of a Photoshop lie, but there we go. Um, any questions, please do contact me and I will be more than happy to help you guys. As you can see, there are a million different ways to contact me and I'm more than happy to talk to you in any capacity. All right, fabulous. Thank you so much. I will stop sharing and I will hand back. All right, thank you guys. Thank you so much, that was great. Okay, I think next I was gonna have, um, oh, and I wanted to emphasize too, because we have different study abroad options. So with Felicity, you would be able to transfer abroad. That's kind of what we're, it's a transfer word around here is something that we know well. So it wouldn't be a semester abroad, it wouldn't be a summer, it would be like you're transferring there, you're getting your degree. And you're getting to work with all these great people that um, in the industries that you want to work with. And so, so just right. wanted to emphasize that <laughs> at the end, you'd be like, oh, that's right. Yes, you'd come to us, you do your final two years of study. And in the UK, when we say two years, 
it really is two years. You know, there's no piecing together of things here and there. Unless there's a major disaster and you just fail everything, you're going to finish your degree within two years if you transfer to the UK with an associate's degree. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, then I think maybe we'll um, stay in England. <laughs> and Mary, are you ready? I know you you had a, you were, um, got booted off a little bit, but I think um, since we have you now. I am because I've got my lovely daughter in the background. Okay. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> so, um, do I share screen now? Yeah. Yes, yes, please. Sorry to hold you up, everybody. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. And now for this, I'll, while we, you bring up the presentation, um, I'll say that this would be more of a the semester maybe abroad. So we're working on those type of agreements where you can go and maybe come back. Um, if there's other options that we can explore that as well, but I'll let Mary talk about the university and the programs and location, which is also near the beach, so. <laughs> so yes, that, well, thank you very much. Um, I, um, my name's Mary Jones. I manage the study abroad program at the University of Brighton. Um, we too are based in the south of England, right down, uh, a bit further down from Felicity, down on the coast in the city of Brighton. Um, we have about 19,000 students on four campuses, so we are multi-site, but um, so yeah, we are based um, uh, in the city, just outside of the city, and there are three major um, campuses, um, literally 20 minutes from town. So we are, um, each, each campus specializes in a different area of study. Um, so on our city campus, we have um, students studying art and design. Um, on our Morscombe campus, we have students studying other specialists. And up at Falmouth, we have our education, social science, humanities students. So I'm just going to talk you through um, some of the slides. So here we are. We're based right down here in the south of England. Um, one of, again, as Felicity said, it, it was one of the warmest and sunniest locations in the UK. And if you'd have been here yesterday, you would have 100% believed me, it was absolutely glorious. We are 50 minutes from London by train, so we're lovely and convenient. Um, 30 minutes to, bike to Gatwick, and as I said, we're multi-site. So we, we also have a campus based um, in Eastbourne. It is a really friendly, lively, diverse city. Um, lots of stuff going on. As I say, we're based on the beach. We have a lot of history. We have a lot of countryside surrounding us. It's a lovely location for students. Um, it's very uh, geared towards the student population. So there's lots and lots of fun things for students to do. Um, there's always lots of festivals, activities. We have a, a, a really big um, arts festival in May um, with a lot of music, theatre, comedy. Um, fingers crossed we may be able to do that in 2022. We, we are opening up, so we are starting now to have festivals. Cinemas are open. There are lots of activities and the bars and the clubs. Um, there's a great social life in Brighton. Um, it's a very fun place for students to live. Um, the study abroad program um, is where you are able to come and study for a semester or a full year. Um, you're able to pick and choose classes across the university. We will negotiate with you right from the beginning. So from our first contact with you, if you apply to do a study abroad program at Brighton, we will be in touch with you straight away. So every single student we deal with on a one to one basis. So we would discuss your options, what you can take a basket full of modules across the university in various disciplines. So for example, if you wish course or a humanities course or an arts course, um, you can, a social science course, you can uh, mix and match until you have a, a nice um, varied timetable. You are able to take uh, 15, 12 credits, sorry, 12 US credits, um, we 
we would, as I say, we would negotiate your timetable with you prior to coming to make sure that your classes were approved by your home university and to ensure that you um, are able to transfer those classes back. Having said that, you know, we currently have a group of students who are on campus at the moment who chose their classes and then of course they've got to Brighton and they've heard that some of their fellow study abroad students are doing other classes that they're interested in so we still even when you arrive we still have plenty of time to uh, chat with you to rearrange your time to have it. it's not set in stone so we're very flexible with you um, and as I say we work through your class schedule so that you have a really nice mix of classes that you're able to take to transfer back home. Uh, students also, we have a, a high, uh, a good diverse population of full international students. Um, your housing will be arranged for you prior to coming, so you don't need to worry about looking for somewhere to live. Um, and I think you'll find, I'm, I met with our students yesterday who've been on campus for literally two weeks and they've completely settled in they're absolutely loving it so it's really fun to meet up with them and and chat to them about how they're getting on uh, we have high class facilities across the university in ver in various um disciplines so we have lots of media lots of uh sciences aerodynamics we have a huge program uh with nursing and midwifery um we also run a summer programme in July, which is where uh, students are able to come. Currently, it is an education um, summer programme, but we are looking to expand that. But basically, students will have a mixture of um, British culture, literacy, drama, and will be able to go into school. So these students here are students who are training to be teachers. We have um, a, a very strong school of education. It's rated, it's Ofsted. That's an English, um, uh, an English, um, oh, I've forgotten the word at the moment, <laughs> but it's, a, it's very highly thought of. It's, and it's rated one um, in the inspection. That's what I was trying to say. Um, we also run field trips throughout so that you get lots of uh, a, a great range of activities, classroom activities, workshops, um, and you're able to, you know, have downtime, fun time. And as you can see, the students here are all out eating fish and chips, because if you come to England, you have to eat fish and chips. Dur during the semester, we, we put on um, a programme of organised field trip trips. For example, this Saturday, we're taking them to East Sussex. We um, show them around the local areas. Um, we take them out for the day. They're great fun. We watch students forming great friendships and having lots of fun together. They're stress-free, and we feel that they really enhance the students' experience throughout their study abroad. So we take students to London. We do um, a trip to a local castle because you know, we specialise in castles in this country. We also have a weekend away in Oxford and Stratford-upon-Avon where we get tickets to the Royal Shakespeare Theatre. We organise another weekend to Bath and Stonehenge where students have always asked us in the past, how do you get to Stonehenge? And it's without a car, it's really difficult because it is literally in the middle of nowhere. So these are fun weekends. Some of them we lay on for students, the two optional weekends students can choose to come on. Parents usually like these because we do all the organization and they're stress-free and just jump on the coach and enjoy. We um, on hold at the moment, we, we, we usually do a Paris weekend, but that's on hold at the moment until we're able to do some more traveling, but I think in 2022, that will probably come back on the agenda. This is our famous uh, Brighton Pavilion. As you can see, there's always at Christmas time, this is all done out as an ice skating rink on the outside. It's a beautiful palace, which um, is open to the public. You can go inside and have a look. And it's a really famous part um, of the city in Brighton. It, it, it's more or less, sums brighten up really we have just have a bit of everything uh, we are rated right the top 10 stu uk student city 
Um, we have brilliant beaches and it's just a really fun city to, to be in. Um, on our Moleskoon campus, we have um, just undergone a multi-million pound investment in our students. So these are all new halls of residence, uh, new academic buildings, a new business school. Um, it's currently due for completion in spring 22. Um, so we're really excited about this because all this was going on during lockdown. And so actually, even for the academics and staff coming back onto campus, it's unrecognisable. And I think students are going to have a really amazing experience. It was a £300 million investment with the City of Brighton. Um, as I said, it has a new academic building, sports and um, fitness facilities, a new union building, lots of green spaces. We always ask students you know, what they would like more of, and they like outdoor spaces, green spaces, more chilled out study spaces. So it's a, it's a really nice atmosphere for students. Um, with the study abroad, I think one of the fun things for me to watch is students just meeting each other. Uh, it's life changing. Come and study abroad in Brighton and it, it will, you'll never look back. It is something I think that is, you make friends for life. These four lovely students here came from four continents around the world and they were the best of friends when they went home and they still visit each other and are still in contact with each other. So we had a, a student from Germany, one from America, one from New Zealand. Um, Australia and one from from Korea and they were it was just so much fun when they you know they didn't know each other when they arrived and as I say when they left they were the best of friends and I think they traveled all around the world to visit each other within the first two years of going home so it's really fun to watch students just growing and experiencing such an amazing transformation here is our social media uh, information and there's our brochure here, which we can send to anybody who would like to um, have a look at it. Um, you, you know, you're always welcome to get in touch with any of us, um, get in touch with me, my small team. We are part of the international office, but we are really passionate about what we do. Um, it's really important to us that when you study abroad that you have an amazing experience and that you go home, you tell your children and your grandchildren, and it's just something that I think you look back on across your life and you're so pleased you did it. So that's me and the University of Brighton, and we would love to see you here. So thank you for listening, and I hope I hear from some of you soon. Thank you so much, Mary. And I will definitely um, echo that. Like I studied in Spain for a year in my undergrad and I definitely made friends from other countries, from Portugal, from France, from Mexico. I have a good, good friend in Mexico that whenever I'm in town visiting family, I have to visit him as well. He's like extended family. So absolutely, so definitely meet people from all over. Um, Absolutely. And the great thing about being in Europe is that everything is really close to each other. So you can go to like 10, 12 countries when you you're not in school, of course, <laughs> on your summer breaks or your whatever breaks you have. And it's a lot of it's a great way to explore other um, other countries in the area. And so with that, you know, so now we, we've talked about potentially uh, transferring to England and completing your uh, BA there or maybe doing a semester or a year. Now we're going to go uh, to Monica. She's going to tell us about also another transfer program in France with the Rennes School of Business. And so that's is another option for you if you wanted to do a more of a long term study. Okay, Monica, go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I know it's, um, I really appreciate the time for taking uh, and listen to all of this agreement that we have for you. So before I get started and share my screen, I want to introduce myself. My name is Monica Medina. Um, I'm from Colombia, as you can tell with my accent. <laughs> and um, let me, can you just see my screen? Just want yes. to make sure. There okay. we go. We have full screen. Perfect. I am the head of the Americas and international advisor officer uh, for Rennes School of Business. I'm also an alumni. I did my master's degree 
a while ago. But uh, yes, all the experience that Maritza was saying, it's it's true. You can when you're in Europe, you can go all over and you can find tickets like very inexpensive mm -hmm. and just you just do your getaway, go to England, go to Spain and, and, and try to get to know as much as you can. So before we get started, it's good to see why you can study in France or what factors can I take into consideration in order to make that decision. So first, France is very well known because their tuition rates are very attractive. Their quality in higher education is very adapted to student needs. They also, they're usually in the top four in terms of quality in, in education. There are opportunities in research and development. Uh, France, as you know, is a world-class economic power. And you can, you can say that when you see France, French corporations or industries all around the world. So probably you're familiar with companies such as Louis Vuitton, L'Oreal, Danone, Orange, among others. Also, the job talent is value in innovation and entrepreneurship sectors. Let me tell you about it. When I was there, I didn't have any work experience. I did my internship. And after that, I was able to grow in the company and I end up with a position as a product manager. So it doesn't matter if you have you don't have so much experience, you can get really, really nice positions in France. The French style, you know, it's it's crazy. They have they're very rich in history, culture, gastronomy. And if we talk about language, French is the third most common uh, business languages. And with English is the one that you can speak in all continents. And of course, France is an appealing destination for students worldwide. They have the Eiffel Tower, they have the South of France that is, is very dynamic and with everything that they have in common make a very um, funny and, and very active uh, country. If we talk about Brittany, where Ren is located, uh, Brittany is the region and it's one of the most touristic regions in France. As you can see in the image, uh, places are very nice. The beach is very close. People go to do hiking, uh, to do cycling, because it's a very pleasant place and people are very, very nice. If you like seafood, also this region is the one that produces 80% of seafood for all the region. So if you like seafood, that's the place to be. Rennes is the capital of France, is the capital of the Britain. So it's a human-sized, vibrant, and student city. It's a college city as well. You can also find uh, some other universities. And if we talk about location, Paris is one hour and 25, uh, Rennes is one hour and 25 minutes away from Paris by train, which is quite convenient. We also have an airport that can take you to different places such as London, Barcelona, Madrid, Amsterdam. So you don't have to go all the way to the capital to, to, take, to take a plane. We do have the beach that is called Saint Malo, 45 minutes away from Rennes. And we have uh, Mont Saint-Michel, very, very close, one hour away. That is one of the most visited castles around the world. I'm sure if you're staying in Rennes, it's a place that is a must place to go. So, and if we talk about Rennes School of Business, uh, it is a um, school of business that is accredited with the triple accreditation business school. It means that we have the triple crown, three accreditations that are only provided to the 1% of the school of business around the world. These are the Equis, AACSB, and AMBA. So this is going to guarantee you a well and high education with very interesting courses with very good professors and is going to give you in terms of when you're looking for for a job or if you want to continue studying and then thinking about your master or doing a PhD having a, a degree with the triple crown is going to 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 give you like this um, um, let's say like experience that you really uh, receive a very good education 
As you can also see, we do have rankings. We're in the top 10 in France. We also have international rankings. Uh, also, we have in Shanghai. We also have uh, rankings in International Times, QS, among others. And if I tell you about the school, they say, OK, we do have the triple crown, which is very difficult to, to acquire and to maintain. What else we can give you to the students? We become one of the largest school of business in France. We do have around 5,000 students. And we say, OK, what else we can give them? And that's why we became one of the most international school of business in France with 55% of international students. And not only the students, the professors as well. 95% of them are non-French. Some of them don't even speak French. So imagine having this uh, atmosphere, this campus with so many nationalities, around 70 nationalities, and then you get out of campus and leave this French culture is something that is very fascinating. Here you can see some pictures of our campus. As you can see, they are very modern. And what we try to do is that you can find everything in one place. So besides the, the, the classrooms, you can also find places to practice any sport. They have a gym. Uh, if you like music, they can, you can also find a music uh, room. So it's very interesting because you can have all in ones. And today I want to talk about this great opportunity uh, that we have and um, basically is to transfer at Rennes School of Business and get your international bachelor program in management in one year. Our management or international bachelor program is a one year bachelor degree that you will obtain after you get your associate degree. Uh, I am sorry. So this aims to provide a solid academic practical foundation in business management and operations. You, to, you can develop management subject to acquire soft skills, teamwork, interpersonal and linguistic skills. And the good thing about this one year program is that you can get a specialization either in finance, banking, marketing, purchasing and supply chain. And when I talk about log uh, log linguistics means that you basically going to have two hours of French courses uh, during the entire year. So the idea is that you can get a language, your international experience, and of course, to obtain this business background. So it's very, very cool because in one year, you get a specialization as well. The academic year goes from, well, this year is from September 2022 to April 2023. You're going to get your bachelor's dissertation on May 2023, and you're also going to do an internship and that is going to last around eight weeks. So it's very, very interesting uh, because some of the teaching methods will be taught courses, in-class presentation, case studies, e-learning, group project, business research, and simulation. So what I can tell you in my experience is that it's really, very interesting because while you're studying, you can also have this idea of um, having companies, real companies that come to the school and say, okay, we have a problem, how we can solve it. So from the school, you are creating strategies to real companies. And that for, in my experience, that was really cool because I never thought I can have like direct contact to industries while I was studying. And of course, you're gonna have your French courses and if you have some basis, that's not a problem. The idea is that you can keep uh, progressing and get your survivor French. So once you get into the school, you're gonna present an exam. And according to the, the, the score that you get in this exam, they're going to take you to students that have the same level. So you don't worry if you don't speak French. Uh, when I went there, I didn't know how to say anything, just merci. So, but at the end I was able to, you know, have a conversation, go to a restaurant, to a supermarket, uh, maintain a conversation. And, and that was basically because I was in the country. Usually French people like you to, to learn a little bit about of their culture, of the language. So if you bring some um, basic, basic French, it's fine. But of course, at the school, we're gonna help you to, to also improve your French. 
what I wanted to say, and may, maybe you're gonna say, okay, so why is only one year is instead of two years? Because usually in the US, if you transfer to a university, it's going to take you two years. So the reason why is because as soon as you transfer within a in, in high school of business or in any European university, you're gonna start taking business courses. Usually in the US, you take some courses that are not business related. And, and maybe that's why you're taking a little bit of more time. But in terms of, of quality or time in the business courses, it's going to be there. There's nothing else. Here we can see a little bit about of the cost of the studies. Tuition fee is around $10,000 uh, per year. Well, it's just one year for non-European students. So if we do a little comparison between a US university, the average out-of-state tuition is around $25,000. In rent, it's going to be 10,000. The length, of course, is two years. For us, it's one year. And if we sum up everything, uh, we see that even if we go abroad and we have a little bit of more expenses, um, the, the price is quite different and it really makes a difference. We also have FAFSA, so you can apply to them. You know that there are loans up to uh, 7,500. And we do also have a scholarship for you. They are up to 2,000 euros and you can apply without any problem. You don't need to be French. Uh, you don't need to speak French. <laughs> so uh, that is also important for you to know that you can apply to our scholarships as well. So if we sum up everything and we see the program advantages, um, you can save time because instead of, as we mentioned before, instead of two years, it's going to be one year. You're going to save money. We already talked about tuition fees. You're going to have the American accreditation, AACSB. That means that all the credits will be guaranteed transfer. Uh, you're going to have your academic and professional international experience, which means because you're going abroad, you're going to have your internships abroad and in your uh, CV, that's going to be very, very uh, interesting. And you also can pursue your master's degree with an automatic scholarship. So that's also good. Usually in Europe, and, and this is something that is very different for us here in Americas, but usually they go straight and do their master. In, in Americas, what we do is that we do our bachelor, we work a little bit, and then we think about having a master. Here, they go straight. So if you want to pursue your master's degree, this would be a great opportunity as well. We also have a career service center. Sometimes it's difficult for us international students to get a scholarship or find, uh, to get an internship and, and of course get paid about it. So we do have a space that is going to help you in order to have all these tools and get your internship. So they can help you to create your CV, do it in French if needed, um, use social media such as LinkedIn and be in order to make it more attractive for the industries. They help you to create your personal branding. Uh, they help you also to do interview simulations so you can be the best asset for the industry or and the internship that you are applying. They also have different events such as corporate events, job dating, alumni day. And my suggestion here as an, as an alumni is please attend to these kind of events because they're gonna really help you to get in touch with the industries and, and to find the dream job that you want. So companies that have recruited students from the School of Business are Louis Vuitton, L'Oréal, Danone, Lactis, BMP Paribas, Chanel. I think you have heard about some of them. And uh, some practical information, remember that you need to apply for your study visa, your student visa with Campus France and the embassy. This process can take a while, around two months. So be aware that we're gonna help you uh, with all of this process and provide you the letters that you might need to present with Campus France. Uh, we do have an accommodation team and they are really looking forward to help you to find the best place for you. Uh, you can either leave in our residence or you can also use our platform that is very similar to Airbnb. And according of what you're really looking for and your budget and 
all the needs that you need and you can find the best place to live in, in REN. What we require, what are our requirements in terms of admissions? Um, you need to do an application with us. First of all, you need to get uh, your uh, associate degree with Canyons College. Um, after you do, you apply with us. You're gonna submit all your documents such as um, your degree, your transcripts, uh, your motivation letter. And after that, you're gonna have an interview with, a, with your program director. This process might take three weeks. It's very simple and I'll be there to help you. You don't need to have your English proficiency test because you already speak English, so that's not a problem. And after that, um, we ask you to, to be enrolled and reserve your place. And then you will get your enrollment letters that will help you to do all the visa process that you need. One of the questions that most students ask is like, okay, the tuition fee is fine, but what about the cost of living in Ren? Actually, Ren is one of the most uh, inexpensive cities in France. Tuition fees around 600 to 800 euros per month if we talk about accommodation, food, and transport. So another good thing that you have as a student, and that and it, this doesn't matter if you're not French, is that you also are gonna have some benefits from the French government. One of them is called CAF, and is a, a help or a money amount that they're gonna give you each month that is up to 180 euros. So take advantage of this, and the school is going to tell you what to do in order to get this um, benefit. We also have university restaurants and you can find a meal of three euros, which is, it was nothing when I was there. And uh, public transportation, it really depends on you. Some people like to ride bicycles. Some people like me just want to take the bus or the Metro. So I used to pay $32 euros per month and I have unlimited access on the metro and bus. So as you see, the, the city is very well prepared to receive international students. Believe me, since the first day, you're gonna feel that the school is going to be there with you. Uh, they're gonna reply to all of the questions. We actually have a welcome team that is current students that help the, the new students um, to feel comfy and, and well received in the city. So, uh, for example, they meet you at the, rain, at the train station or the airport. Um, they also do trips in, to Mont Saint Michel, Paris, Amsterdam. They also organize international days. So they are very aware that uh, you come from another country that sometimes you feel like, okay, I don't know. I, I don't know about this culture. I feel scary. I feel homesick. All the emotions that we can have when we go abroad, but Believe me, this is going to last one week. Then you're going to feel very happy to, to have this experience because you're going to grow as a person, um, as a professional, and it's going to bring you very, very good outcomes afterwards. Uh, Maritza, I don't know if I have time to show a video. Uh, yeah, I think you would be fine. Um, go ahead. Uh, how long is it? It's like four minutes. Yes, I think, yeah, you're good. Go ahead. Okay. In terms of integration, it's been really interesting. I've met people who spoke English. I met people who only speak French, but either way, I've been able to get around. And that's one thing I think new applicants need to understand. You don't need to speak French to be here. You will learn. Welcome to Rennes School of Business located in France. We are an international school down to our core. Students from all over the world come to study and expand their knowledge in and outside of classes. We're here to guide them along the way from the very beginning of their time with us. Studying at a community college can be the start of a successful academic and professional career. But that's not all. If you also think about how to save money and time, Rennes School of Business, in collaboration with your community college in the U.S., allows you to obtain a bachelor's degree with just one more year after you complete your associate's degree. How does it work? Typically, in the US, the bachelor degrees are four years, but we follow the European model, which is three years. Through an articulation agreement with guaranteed transfer of credits, 
you can join the last year of our bachelor degree in business and finish a full bachelor's degree in three years instead of the four you would need if you transferred to a typical university in the U.S. Let's see the advantages. You save money. You finish a bachelor's in three years instead of four, which means you also save one year. You have the opportunity to join one of our 15 master's programs with an automatic scholarship after completion of a bachelor with us. You start your career earlier so you can start earning earlier. You get to study both in the U.S. and in Europe, so you're getting the best of two worlds. But the great thing about going to REN was that they partnered with the U.S. in terms of getting student loans. REN School of Business is eligible to receive students that have applied for federal aid from the U.S. The rigorous vetting of the U.S. Department of Education guarantees this distinction only to select business schools that offer the highest standards of quality, processes, and accountability. Students from the U.S. now have among their choices of funding REN School of Business a vibrant, international, and recognized business school in France where the quality of life, excellence of education, and international atmosphere is second to none. Our dedicated student platform allows students to check varied housing options, including our on-campus residence hall. Our campus is spread out over 30,000 square meters and offers modern amenities, sports rooms, cafeteria and dining hall, library, lecture halls, state-of-the-art classrooms, recreational facilities, and everything necessary for the success of this unique experience. From arrival, students can benefit from the pickup service organized by the International Student Association, Welcome. Throughout the year, this student-run association offers a variety of events created by students for students. For any question a student may have, whether it be big or small, Aloha Square is the one-stop place where staff are eager to help. I like the classes because it's so, there's so many different people from various parts of the world. You're going to learn so much in, within a week about culture, how business affects culture and everything else. I arrived literally on a Sunday night. Next morning would have been the last orientation week. I think her name was Marie, very sweet girl. Um, she picked me, right, picked me up right from the airport even though it was late. I wasn't expecting a ride because of how delayed my flight was and that was more that I could ask for, especially having someone who cared enough about to get me to where I needed to go. And the welcome team was great in terms of giving me the information I needed to start as a new student. The city of Rennes, a mere one hour and 25 minutes from Paris, located in a beautiful region near coastal attractions is the ideal scenario. Safe, historical, and with an excellent quality of life. As I've been told, this is technically a college city, college town. You'll get a lot of joy out of it. And if you like different, come here. Well, I just wanted to share this testimony with the students because sometimes it's better to listen from someone that is there that uh, it has experienced even this. Like she arrived very, very late at the airport and said, like, no one is going to pick me up. And they were there to help her. So those kind of experiences are the ones that maybe you're scared in that time, but now that you think about them, you just laugh about it. So um, thank you so much for, for listening to this uh, great opportunity. And if you have any questions, here is my email, also my colleague's email, she's located in France. And thank you so much for, uh, for all this um, uh, time that you give to us. Thank you, Monica. Um, that was great. I mean, it's really good to in the video to kind of see the campus a little bit and see what uh, where you might be living and start to pick, start picturing yourself there. So I think that is why we bring on um, reps because they have pictures, they live there, so you can kind of start seeing yourself somewhere, you know. And now I wanted to point out that both if you transfer abroad, um, both of these schools at the BA level are giving you options to work with real people, real clients, real like world problems. And I'll let you know, in my experience, having gone to school in the US, I got that at the graduate level. So getting that earlier on, if you are to transfer, then I think that would be great to just start building your resume, start working on some internships, start getting that experience you'll need once you do graduate. So something to definitely keep in mind. I think it's great uh, that over in France, you were able to use that, uh, FAFSA, they have scholarships, you can transfer directly into a master's. So this is some of the things I picked up and I wanted to kind of uh, do a little summary and for 
$10,000 a year, you do in one year. So uh, I hope I got all that right. And of course, if you're interested in any of these schools, you can like, again, I just want to say, uh, let us know. And I can send you the videos, send you their brochures, send you what they've sent me. Uh, so that make sure you can look over it and, and you know, reach out to us, reach out to them if you have any questions following up. Yeah. Now we have a little bit of time. I didn't see any questions. Let me just make sure. Yeah, then I've been watching chat. I didn't see questions. Um, I've also watched the Facebook. I don't think you've heard questions there either. So I I do have a question myself. <laughs> because similarly, we we present college academies to high school students and they the counselors and the, the teachers and students and parents always want to know, do you have certain kind of profile of the students that you are looking for? Is there, in other words, is there a good fit for certain kind of students that your university is, is seeking? Um, I would say if you have blue hair and Doc Martens, we are the place for you. You're gonna fit in very well. Um, but. Really, we take students from all walks of life, all different kind of kids, um, just because creative arts is just so broad. Our students tend to come from all walks of life. They're really, really interesting kids. They, they teach me more about um, race and gender than I ever, ever thought I'd know. So it's really interesting to actually get a different perspective from young people and what they're doing I mean I'm only 35 but every day is definitely a new learning experience so yeah as long as you're creative we want you you're good uh, for us I will follow our slogan on frame thinking so for these students that just want to think outside the frame that like just just want to leave something completely different this is the right place to live because um, with the teaching methods that we have and all this um, mind of everything is possible, don't think that it's, don't, don't make excuses, just make it happen. And something that we say is like, the question is not why, it's why not? So that's, that's the, the type of student that we say, this is the right place for you to be because uh, you wanna learn a lot. Okay, so I think um, when I walk into a room and on the first day of orientation and we, we see a face, uh, a sea of faces of study abroad students who look terrified, you know, they're out of their comfort zone, they've probably never been away from home before, and they have no idea how amazing the experience is going to be. So I think anybody who is brave enough to get themselves a passport, get themselves on an airplane and go and study in another country is the type of student we want at Brighton. And I think, as I said, it's life-changing. I think students, um, I think it's something we, you know, you grow as a person in such a short space of time. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have parents who phone and say, I need to buy a meal package. I need to buy this. You know, my child is going to starve. No, they're not. I promise you. And I say to so many parents so many times, you know, they are not going to starve. They will be the best of friends and they will come home a completely different person. It's life changing and it's just an amazing thing to do. And I think I'm still in contact with many students. I've been doing this a long time. And I think it's the most rewarding um, thing when you get an email from a student to say, that was the best thing I ever did. And I just think it's lovely to watch students just do something different. And so, yeah, all I can say is, if you're thinking about studying abroad, just do it. Don't be afraid, put your toe in the water, and do it. Thank you. That's that's lovely and, and encouraging. And I think sometimes students are also concerned about money. And Marita and I, neither of us came from a middle class, wealthy uh, background at all. But like what Mary was saying, we wanted to do it. So we went ahead and found ways to do it.
So I will encourage students either Alicia that you're here or student online or later you're watching this recording. If you want to do it, you'll find up doing it. And then as you have heard from the university representatives here, also ISP, we will find a way to help you realize your dream. We are working with foundation to work on funds that students will be able to apply to when they want to do study abroad, either in the sense of a semester abroad or transfer abroad. And we, more importantly, at College of Canaan's, we're trying to build a study abroad culture. Sometimes company college students got left out and left behind in the opportunity to do study abroad because your educational journey, it seems to be chopped up, right? Two years here, two years there, or two years here, one year there. What we want to do, as we can see uh, from the previous few years, that we understand global mindset is very important for students of next generation. So as college of Kenyans, as many of our students coming to attend community college and before they go to a four year or complete their bachelor's degree, we don't believe that students, because you're at a community college, therefore your chance of studying abroad should be diminished. We actually want to promote it. We want to celebrate it. We want to find ways for you to do it. That's the reason that we are doing uh, virtual fairs like this. So tell your friends, tell all your teachers, you know, ask your teachers to let you announce this event in the class. I know majority of teachers have done that, but sometimes having attended one like this and then let people know what awesome videos and information and helpful representatives that you have encountered, it would help your friends, encourage, encourage your friends to go with you. We always like to say, bring two with you, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when we talk to the high school, right? When we talk to the high school uh, a whole class, we said, don't just come by yourself. Bring a friend or two with you because that would also make your life very different as you landed on the new soil. So with that, uh, I would like to thank all our representatives here. Um, I know I can see Felicity's uh, the, the windows from bright to dark. So it seems that the sun has set. And Mary, I would say you'll be similar. Uh, so, with, you know, you guys come from different global time zones. So we just so appreciate that you are like us, truly believe the importance of international education. Oh, definitely. We love our international we kids. Yeah, we do. I did have one question that I wanted to ask everyone, just because we get that we receive international students and I think we get it. So our students, I think, might also have questions about, you know, the world has changed. Uh, there's travel restrictions, there's new rules and regulations around COVID and whatnot. So I wanted to get a sense of like, OK, maybe at each location, something that has changed. Um, how are things going? Are you doing classes in person? Because like right now, I can tell you on our campus, uh, we have opened up more classes and at next semester we're hoping to have even more classes in person and live. So kind of want to see like if students go this uh, spring, what will classes look like or, or during the summer? Okay. I mean, it's also school. an yep. absolute disaster. Um, fingers crossed, <laughs> short of an absolute disaster. We intend to be 100% back in person in spring. We're 90% we're in person now. And I think that's the beauty of an art and design university is that the kids are in studios. Kids, sorry, that's so patronizing. The students <laughs> are in studios. So a lot of the time they're wearing masks anyway because they're dealing with certain mm -hmm. chemicals or you know whatever they're doing, but they're in big rooms and naturally socially distancing. So. As an institution, I wouldn't say we've done anything better than any other uni in terms of social distancing, but we've been really lucky to have very, very few outbreaks on campus, just I think by the nature of um, art and design universities. And yeah, should be 100% back to normal, fingers crossed, in spring. Thank you. Sorry, Mary. Yeah, I, yeah, I think likewise, I think we are, at the moment we're doing what we call blended learning. So campus is open, everything is open. Um, a lot of the big lectures are online, but all the small group workshops and seminars are all being in, held in person. And I think students are really enjoying that flexibility. So um, as Felicity said, I think, you know, we are monitoring it all the time. Um, there are restrictions in some classrooms as to how many students are able to be in so that they can socially distance if they, you know, if they, so they feel safe. But obviously, you know, student safety is a, is a huge priority. 
Um, but yes, we are all being well, fingers crossed. I think we are moving forward to uh, transitioning from blended learning back onto full campus activity. So, but you know, it's a little bit of a waiting game, isn't it? We just want mm -hmm. to make sure, as I say, students, it's mo the most important thing is that students are safe. So we, but yeah, we are back on campus and we're back up and running. So it's great to see. Thank you. For us, it's pretty much the same. We, right now, the students that are currently studying are using the 50-50, which means 50 online, 50 face-to-face. -face. Uh, we're really looking forward that by next spring, they can be 100% face-to-face. However, we don't know, we keep our fingers crossed. We wish we can have a crystal ball and say, okay, this day coronavirus is over, but we don't. <laughs> So we, we're, we're, we're kind of become more flexible. So probably if it's not going to be 100% face-to-face, it's going to be 70%. Uh, we just have to keep waiting and, and see how everything evolves. Thank you so much. So my last question is, not a question more of um, invitation to for you to entice students. If you were to say like in literally in 20 seconds, why students would want to or should consider studying at your university, what would you say to the students? In 20 seconds, uh -huh. um, I'd say come and give it a go. It's absolutely wild. You come back to the UK and the amazing amount of students from the US that stay in the UK is just incredible. Not just speaking for UCA, but the amount of Americans that come to the UK to study and end up staying here forever is quite amazing. There definitely must be a drawback to the motherland. We're really excited to see you. International students in the UK are so, so important to the whole system. You guys really feed our knowledge we're a small island. We're a nation of bog people. We need people from outside. We need people to come in, give us other ideas and give us creative thoughts. So come and spread your ideas and there'll be so many opportunities for you. You'll have an amazing time. Sorry, that was a bit long. Thank you. 20 seconds. Well, I would just say, um, you know, step out of your comfort zone, come to Brighton, um, do something different. I think that's, you know, you don't, uh, you don't appreciate it sometimes until you actually do it. And I think for so many students, they, they think, oh, I can't afford it. Or, I, you know, it is affordable, you know, ask for money for your birthday, for Christmas, save up, have a little study abroad savings pot and just plan and go for it. And I promise you won't be disappointed. It's life changing and just, one of the best things you'll ever do. And I will say that um, actually it's a decision to study abroad that you will never regret. You're gonna get more plus that, that comes. And I will say that um, it's a life changing. You're gonna grow as a person, as a professional. You will become more mature in terms of making your decisions yourself. Even when you get lost, you don't know how to do and you solve it your own. Um, you're going to create this networking that probably at home you don't do it because you're going to meet people from all around the world. And it's something that you're going to get yourself and your friends become family. And that is something that you're going to experience when you're outside. Uh, those are my 20 seconds. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much again for your time. And then we hope to do virtual fairs like this twice, at least once a semester, and then most likely we'll divide into twice a semester because we believe the more time that students can hear about um, from the universities and also the support that ISP office is giving to our students, that could be quite reassuring. So again, last chance for a question. If not, we're gonna close out the information section. Yeah, right. Before we go, let's give someone else, you know, if they want to ask anything online, but I also wanted to um, talk about resources here on campus or even in the States. Like we have IIE.org, which they do generation study abroad. It is a great resource for students who are thinking about studying abroad, whether it's long-term, short-term, 
Um, they have study abroad search engine, um, study guides, parent guides, because sometimes you need to convince your parents too. you know, their baby is going away, maybe, and they might not want you to go. So there's some guides to help them with that process. If it's scary for you, it might be 10 times more scary for your parents. So keep that in mind, uh, especially if they're funding your education, then you should definitely keep them in the loop. Uh, there's research articles. Uh, there's also scholarships available for students who study abroad. I know for one, the Gilman Scholarship, that's a big one through the U.S. Department of State. Uh, that scholarship is open twice a year. So depending on where you want to study, you have to keep a close eye on that one. And, um, you know, once you let me know, I'm like, hey, I want to study here. I potentially want to go in a year or in a semester. And I can send you all that information as well. Um, and I'll put some of the links in the chat now so that people have them. And let me actually, I have the screen up, so I'll share the page just so you can get a little snapshot of the information. Like I said, it's IIE.org. And then there's the Gilman Scholarship. This one's to the US Department of State. And then there's CIEE.org, which is also a nonprofit study abroad and intercultural exchange. And these are all really good start as far as resources on study abroad. Now, if, if more scholarships come my way, then of course we'll let you know how you can apply. There's, you know, sometimes we even have different uh, scholarship options to apply on campus that might not be relatively, you know, study abroad related, but if it's not restricted, then maybe you can save that money. Like I said, birthday money, scholarship money, whatever it is you can save. Maybe to an extra weekend job or something, but make sure you can save up and so you can do this option because uh, later in life, it might be harder to do these kind of things. So I always say do it early if you can. Get it, get it done. Do those international connections now. Now I'll stop sharing. Want to see any closing thoughts or anything else that we want to, um, anything, uh, any questions that might have come up? Thank you for having us been really good. It's always great to have partners joining us to you know, th let's use now. There are a lot of people in the world who are passionate about international education. And we will do all we can to make that happen for our students. That's great. And thank you for helping us build the culture of study abroad at College of the Canyons. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having us. Yes. Partners, we'll reach out to you again, and then we will soon. Uh, we'll have the next level of meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good you night, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia.